Welcome back, Rally fans. Today we're continuing our journey through the FIA's Rally Pyramid. This time I'll be diving into the World Rally Championship's Rally 3 car and exploring what makes this class one of the most exciting for the future of the WRC and rallying as a whole. Introduced in 2021, Rally 3 has quickly carved out its spot in rallying across the world. Positioned strategically between the Rally 2 and Rally 4, Rally 3 presents a much needed bridge for the huge gap that sat between those two classes in the past. It strikes a fantastic balance of performance, affordability, and accessibility. So much so that it's become the top pick for young drivers looking to make their way to the top of the ranks. The World Rally Championship has even made Rally 3 the class for the Junior WRC Championship. Let's kick things off by lifting the hood on the Rally 3 car. The beating heart that powers it is a 1.6 liter turbocharged engine, similar in size to the Rally 2. However, it's slightly detuned to yield approximately 215 horsepower and M Sport actually advertises their Ford Fiesta Rally 3 as having 235 horsepower and roughly 300 pound-feet of torque. That power is distributed to all four wheels, which is one of the most exciting features that I'll get into. Weighing in at a minimum of 1,210 kilograms or around 2,650 pounds, these rally machines are light on their feet, yet resilient enough to withstand the brutal beatings encountered on a rally stage. Rally 3 cars employ a 5-speed sequential transmission much like their Rally 2 and Rally 1 counterparts. With lower power than those two, the transmissions can be less reinforced, which makes them lighter and cheaper. This setup ensures nearly instant gear changes while keeping the top speeds in moderation. Rally 3 also marks the introduction of four-wheel drive at the third level of the WRC, which until now has only featured two-wheel drive, giving them the traction to brave the varying terrains and weather conditions they'll encounter around the world. The suspension in the Rally 3 cars emulates a simplified McPherson strut similar to Rally 2 but with certain limitations on intricacy and wheel travel to maintain competitive fairness and manage costs. When you look at the Rally 3 next to the Rally 2, you can see a couple of key differences in this area. The Rally 3 must maintain the track width from the factory, which is why it doesn't have the large flared wheel arches found on the Rally 2 cars. As for the wheel travel, you can see how constrained it is when going over jumps. All of this will force the drivers to take it a little bit easier on the cars and their bodies. The FIA has laid down strict regulations for the Rally 3 class with the goal of ensuring fair play and inviting a broader spectrum of manufacturers and competitors. As a part of this endeavor, a firm budget cap has been implemented at 100,000 euros and they've also placed a cap on the cost of parts, which means teams won't be using exotic materials to gain an advantage. There are also explicit restrictions on aerodynamics to ensure costs are kept at bay. Rally 3 cars are required to bear a striking resemblance to their production versions, with only very few specific modifications permitted. In terms of aerodynamics, these cars are far less advanced than the Rally 2, with none of the front and rear aero pieces, and slightly smaller rear wings. However, even with these constraints, they still exhibit a slight generation of downforce. The rear wing does play a crucial role at generating downforce at the rear of the car, which enhances grip on the rear tires. All of that means that the drivers of the Rally 3 don't have the additional downforce as an aid like they do in Rally 1 and Rally 2. While many things are at a lower level with the Rally 3 cars, safety is one thing that is not compromised. FIA regulations specify a very comprehensive roll cage design that shields drivers and co-drivers in the event of a crash, minimizing the potential for major injuries. 
while they may not match the speeds of the Rally 2 or come anywhere near the Rally 1, they're still exposed to significant dangers on stages, making these safety requirements indispensable. Rally 3 cars adopt the simplified components similar to the ones found on Rally 4 cars, which aids in cost control. Actually, on the M Sport Ford Fiesta, many of the parts are interchangeable between the Rally 3 and Rally 4. These include things like the same wheels and tires, body panels, front suspension hardware, brakes, and off-the-shelf turbochargers, just to name a few. These elements come together to provide a more authentic, raw driving experience that throws the spotlight on the driver's skills rather than the car's capabilities. As of right now, Rally 3 only has one manufacturer with a homologated car, the M Sport Ford Fiesta. But Renault has thrown their hat into the ring as well with the introduction of their Clio Rally 3, which as of this recording still needs homologation. I'm hoping we see a lot more manufacturers join this level to give teams and drivers more options to choose from. Put in simple terms, a Rally 3 car could be seen as a Rally 4 car, but with four-wheel drive. This class provides an excellent transition between the two-wheel drive Rally 4 car and the more potent and intricate Rally 2, which used to be the jump between classes. Compared to Rally 4, the addition of four-wheel drive substantially enhances performance and handling, offering a more precise, higher speed drive while still maintaining reasonable cost and maintenance demands. So there you have it, the Rally 3 car. While they may not be as spectacular or advanced as the Rally 1 and the Rally 2 cars, they offer an excellent harmony of performance, cost efficiency, and fun for the drivers and fans alike. This balance makes them the ideal choice for up and coming drivers, smaller teams, and national championships around the world. What are your thoughts on the Rally 3 cars? Do you believe they strike the right balance between cost, performance, and accessibility? I'd love to hear what you think in the comments below. I, for one, think it's the most exciting class to be added in a very long time. If you found this in-depth look into Rally 3 cars informative and engaging, please give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more content like this. Until we meet again, keep the rally flame burning.